This is an art attack. This is an art attack. This is art attack. <laughs> fed up of people bursting in through your bedroom door without knocking first. Well now, they've got no excuse. Because what you need is an angry knocker. <laughs> Come and have a look at this. Take a piece of cardboard box card and start by drawing an angry mouth. Now it can be any shape you like, but just make sure it's angry. And you must make the lips just over one centimetre thick like that and then cut it out there and then the best way to do that is pop a pencil through the middle to get your scissors in and you'll have something that looks like that and that will be the knocker device and then place that onto a bigger piece of cardboard box card and just draw around it like that and then using this as a guide just draw in the rest of your face. Now don't forget to make it really angry, a sort of gruesome gargoyle. Make it really ugly, like that. And when it comes to drawing in the shape of your face, make sure the chin goes all the way round those big lips, like that. And just finish it off with the ears there and some teeth. And when you've done your face, it's very important so just draw two dots at the top of the top lip and two dots just below the top lip, not too far apart. Then stick a sharp pencil through those. Be very careful doing that to make holes in them. Cut the whole thing out and you'll have something that looks like that. And there it is, that's your gargoyle's face. Now to thicken up the knocker device or handle, take a sheet of newspaper and roll it or scrunch it up into a sausage like that and then just give it a twist and wrap it around one side of those cardboard lips like that. Tape that into place and then do the same on both sides using plenty of tape so it's nicely rounded and thick. And then take a rounded pebble or stone, a small pebble or stone, and just place that on the bottom lip and just tape that into position by taping it just around the outside edge of the pebble. Don't go over the top of the pebble. And use plenty of strong tape. Now to make it really secure, mix some PVA glue in equal parts with water, the good old white school glue you get in squidgy bottles. Paste that onto your cardboard and paper lips and just Put on some strips of kitchen roll or tissue paper or loo roll, wrap them around the lips into the glue like that, press them into place with the glue and when it comes to the pebble just glue around the outside edge again and put your strip of tissue paper around the edge. Don't go over that pebble otherwise your knocker won't knock. Cover the whole thing in two layers of tissue paper and PVA glue mixture and when it's gone hard you'll have something that looks like this. See that? Rock hard and you've got the pebble peeping out at the top. And then place that on your gargoyle's face, line it up with the lips and then just take another small rounded pebble or stone and just pop that onto the cardboard lips on your gargoyle's face and place those 3D lips over the top, line up the stones so they knock and then tape the pebble into place in the same way PVA glue right up to the edge two layers of it and when then that's gone hard you'd have something that looks like that look at that it's rock solid and the pebble is trapped there and then you can if you want to build up your gargoyle's face into 3D ugly features just scrunch up a ball of tissue paper into your glue mixture squeeze out the excess and then just place it onto your cardboard and mold it into the shape of those features and if you do all the features in the same way and then leave them to dry when they're dry it goes rock hard and all 3d like look at that really ugly see that but whatever you do don't cover up 
those holes. If you do cover them up, just pop a pencil through them. And now it's ready to paint. Now you can paint it any colour you like, poster paint or acrylic paint, but here's a good technique. How about if you paint it all black to start with and then scrunch up a ball of tissue paper or kitchen roll, not too tight, and dip it into a lighter coloured paint and then just very gently brush it across the surface, you get this sort of mottled ancient effect. Now I'm using a bronzy colour here, a light brown colour, and it makes it look all metallic. And when you've done the whole gargoyle face in the same way, it'll look something like this. Look at that. That looks absolutely brilliant. I've even done the knocker in the same colour. And then if you turn it over, you can thread some string through those holes and tie the knocker to the gargoyle's head with a knot round the back. And I've even painted the string so you can't see it. And then just put some sticky tack on the back and hang it up on your bedroom door. And anyone that wants to come into your bedroom is confronted by an angry knocker. <laughs> and you know, you could try different gargoyle shapes for the different rooms in your house. And of course, you can do them in any colour you like. Try it yourself, an angry gargoyle knocker. Hello! Yes, it's me, the head. Now, to make one of those knockers, draw and cut out an angry mouth. Draw round it onto some card, putting in the rest of the face and a chin underneath. Pierce two holes above the lip and two below. Stick some paper and a pebble onto the knocker and cover it with tissue paper and glue mixed with water. Build up the features on the face with tissue dipped in glue mixture. When it's dry, paint all the bits and tie the knocker to the face to get an angry knocker. Now, that is what I call a right royal art attack. Oh, goodness. Aye, aye. What's this place, then? Let's take a look around. Horses at work. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> this gives me an idea for a big art attack.
quick look at this doll's house. That is an ordinary doll's house. Now take a look at this picture that I've drawn of it. Can you spot the mistake? Well, okay, have a look at the doll's house again. There it is, still an ordinary doll's house. And now my picture. Well, actually, there are quite a few mistakes on there. In fact, I've made the classic mistake of drawing what I think this house looks like as opposed to what I can actually see. And, you know, we all make that mistake sometime when we're drawing or painting. We draw what we think something looks like as opposed to what we can actually see with our eyes. So, OK, I'm going to start this house again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look really closely this time and I'm going to draw what I can see with my eyes as opposed to what I think I can see. So just take a look at the overall shape. There it is. And now the picture I drew, see that? They're completely different. So I'm going to start with the most obvious thing, the side of the house. See, in my picture, I didn't draw the side of the house, but in fact, I can actually see it. And the rule is, if you can see it, draw it. Now the shape of the roof, there it is. I'll put that in because I can see it from this angle. And the side of the house, there it is. And the wall, see this little wall at the front? So OK, that's the basic shape of the house and it's much better already. Now what about the detail, like the windows and the doors? Well, again, let's take a look at my picture. There it is, that's the picture I drew. And what about the real house itself? Well, again, the detail is completely different. So let's draw what I can see, not what I think I can see. Let's put these windows in. Now, um, they're quite fancy, actually. Okay window ledges and they've got that sort of ornate top to them and what about the colour well you can't see the glass but they just look black to me and you know the rule if they look black draw them black just colour them in and then put this crossbar in Pull it in again. Like that. What about this round one? And it's got this little design on the side of it. I mustn't forget this sort of brick line that goes around the house and this ornate zigzag along the roof. Another line of bricks. And what else can I say? What about that door? Well, it's actually quite intricate, isn't it? Take a look at that, see it? So we just draw this arch on the top and it's down the side. Let's see. You remember the rule, if you see it, draw it. And just put these windows in. This little window in here, like this. Just keep checking it as you're doing it. And there it is. Good tip to remember that. Next time you're drawing or painting something, look really closely at it and draw what you can see, not what you think you can see. Oh, I like that. Draw what you see, not what you think you see. Draw what you see, not what you think you see. Draw what you see, not what you think you see. I'll remember that one. Hi, I'm Eleanor and I've just had an art attack with my 3D fox. I'm Jamie. I made a footprint picture by drawing around a pair of trainers. I painted them using different shades of blue and purple and then placed them onto a stripy background. Hi, my name's Sina and this is my everlasting pattern. The strips can be swapped and changed around whichever way you like and the pattern always stays lined up. Yes, brilliant art attacks. Hey, and what about that everlasting pattern? 
doesn't matter where you place the pieces, the pattern still works. So, okay, how about an everlasting picture? Try this. Take a piece of thick paper or thin card and just divide it roughly into four equal sections with the lines going down like that. And then place your ruler so that it's about a third of the way down those lines and just mark a point on the left-hand side there and then a point going through all of those lines to the right-hand edge. And then move your ruler down a third and again just make a mark on the left-hand edge and again going through all of those lines like that to the right hand edge and then design your picture and make it really simple but the rule is you must draw the foreground in going through all of these marks at the bottom here now I'm doing a very simple beach picture so this is the sand hills and see the way I'm just going through all of those marks at the bottom there and then just up to the final one and when you come to draw the background of your picture the rule is you must do the background going through those marks up at the top third. And the background in a beach picture is the sea. And then draw some detail into each section. Now, you can draw whatever you want. I'm just gonna draw a palm tree in this section. But you must make sure it doesn't cross into another section. So whatever you do in each section, don't let it go over the line to the section next door. I'll just finish this tree off. Some big leaves there, just squeeze them into the section. See that? And in here, I think a little cartoon swimmer. <laughs> little mask. Here, cartoon shark. Do yeah, anything you want, really. Make it very simple and funny. <laughs> Do a cloud up here and a sun. And just to finish it off down here, I think. Yeah, sandcastle. <laughs> when you finish that, colour it in however you like. You can paint it or felt tip pen it. Cut the sections into strips, and look at that. Wherever you place the sections, the picture will still work. See that? Turn them around there. Or you could even move these bits to there, like that. And there it is, an everlasting picture. And you can do a very simple one, like this, or you could do a pattern, or you can even do a more complicated one, like this. Look at that. Wherever you place those sections or those strips, the picture works. As long as you draw the foreground through the marks at the bottom and the background through the marks up at the top. Try it yourself. An everlasting picture. And I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!